Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So uh, today is 10-12-2021 at the making of this video. And I have put together for you a compilation of about six of my Christmas crochet tutorials because Christmas is coming up. So this will be part one. Uh, there are six different tutorials here and I will have another one soon of more Christmas tutorials. So I hope that you have a chance to look through them all. I will put timestamps at the start of each one of the tutorials. If you look in the comment section, um, you will uh, see the timestamps. You can just click on that and it'll go to each individual tutorial. So surely I hope, hopefully, there'll be uh, something there in this group of six that you like and want to make. If not, please stand by for part number two, part two of my Christmas uh, compilation video. Take care, okay? Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this novelty um, Christmas tree hat. It's actually, it's pretty, it's really easy to do. Um, it's got these little knobble, knobs kind of, or little bitty puffs that stick out to kind of make it look like a tree, I guess. And it's got the fur pom-pom on top. I got this at Amazon. And then it's just got a bunch of little pom-poms all over it. So, I mean, but you can decorate it any way you want. You know, if you want to put lights on it, uh, garland on it, anything you want. You know, the sky's the limit on decorating. I just stuck with simple pom-poms. Um, so it will be good for a man or a woman. So, uh, you know, to, uh, accent that ugly Christmas sweater for Christmas time. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay. For this project I'm using, now for the trunk or the brim of the hat, I'm using, this is just regular Red Heart Super Saver. It's just a regular, uh, four weight, um, acrylic yarn. You don't have to use this brand, but any type of uh, regular four weight yarn will work for the brim of the hat. The color that I'm using is called coffee. Now for the main part of the hat, I'm using Premier Puzzle Yarn. It's a 100% acrylic and it is a bulky number five. So I would recommend using the four weight for the brim or the trunk of the tree and then I would recommend the bulky number five for the main part of the tree. You don't have to use this brand, but any, so any type of bulky five will work. By doing the brim and the four weight and this and the bulky five, it's just kind of making it just a little bit poofier on top, I guess, like a tree. Not much, but you know, just a little bit kind of make it more look a little bit more like a tree I guess but that would be my recommendations I mean you can definitely use a four weight um but uh I would recommend the bulky five I think if you use the four it might be a little bit smaller but you know it's still probably going to work there's 328 yards in this bulky five and that'll be enough to make the hat and for the brim of the four weight uh, it ain't going to take very much at all so you won't need very much of that and then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, you want to start off with a chain of 60 in the color that you're using for the trunk or the brim of your hat. So we're working from the brim all the way up to the point of the tree will be the top part. So we're starting at the bottom. So once you get your chain of 60 made, without twisting your chain, you want to follow it down and we're going to slip stitch into our first chain to form a ring. Now what we're going to do is chain one and we're going to go right back into the same spot and slip stitch. And I apologize for the dark yarn, but this part's pretty easy. Now we're just going to put one single crochet in every stitch all the way around the entire ring. Just like that. So I'm going to continue working one single crochet in every stitch until I get back to the beginning. 
Okay, when you make it back around to the beginning, you should have 60 single crochets now at the end of round one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a stitch marker here. I'm just going to use this piece of yarn here. And I'm going to place it right here after my last stitch. That way I know where I end and where I begin. Now I'm going to jump right over to my first single crochet and I'm going to single crochet into it. And now I'm just going to continue and work one single crochet in every stitch around until I get back around to my stitch marker. Just like that. Okay, I've made it back to my stitch marker at the end of round two. Go ahead and pull your marker up. And we're going to work another round. You should have 60 stitches there of one single crochet in every stitch. It's like this. So one single all the way around, back to your stitch marker. Okay, I've made it to the end of round three of the brim. Now I'm just going to, I should have 60 stitches still. You should have 60. I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into my next stitch after the stitch marker. I'm going to tie my yarn off. So that's the brim of the hat. You can take your stitch marker out. And of course, we'll do another layer at the end at the bottom to clean up that last edge. Now I'm going to start with my, my green. And you just want to start somewhere near where you left off. Towards the back of the hat here. And we're going to start off by chaining one. Now we're just going to work one single crochet back in that same stitch. And then we're going to work one single crochet in every stitch around all the way back to the beginning. Just like that. So one single crochet back to your starting point. Okay I have come to the end of round four and you still should have 60 stitches. So we're going to go ahead and end round four by slip stitching into our first single crochet. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. So now we're working on the back side of our work. So we're going to start off and we're going to put one single crochet right here into this very first stitch that we slip stitched into. And now we're going to put one triple crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to yarn over twice, go into the next stitch, and we're going to triple crochet. And then a single into the next. Triple crochet into the next and single into the next triple into the next and single into the next and that's the repeat all the way around triple into the next and then single. And if you turn your work around, you'll see it's making little poofs, I guess. Little pop, pops out a little bit. So that's going to be the texture of our tree. So we're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around. Triple crochet, single crochet, triple crochet, single crochet, all the way around until you get to the end of your round.
just like that. Okay, I have come to the end of round five, and your last stitch should have been a triple crochet. Now we're going to go ahead and end with a slip stitch into our first single crochet right here, and you still should have 60 stitches. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to start round six, and we're going to put one single crochet right here back into the very first stitch. And now it's just one single crochet in every stitch around. So there's one single on top of this triple, one single into the next single there, then one single right here on top of this triple, and one single right here into this next single, one single right here on top of this triple. This kind of might have to look for the stitches just a little bit but it's just one single crochet in every stitch around until you get back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it around to the end of round uh, six. And we're going to, we still should have 60 stitches. We're going to go ahead and end with the slip stitch into our first single crochet. And now what we're going to do is just we're, we're going to repeat rounds five and six until we reach a total of 11 rounds. So we'll start round seven by chaining one and turning our work. Remember, we turn our work now at the end of every round. And we start off by single crocheting into the first stitch and triple crocheting into the next. Oops. Single crochet and triple crochet. Single and triple. And we do this all the way around and so we get back to our starting point. And then we would just end with the slip stitch into our first single crochet, chain one and turn, and then we just repeat round six, which is just one single crochet in every stitch. And then we repeat round five again and round six again. So we're, we're just gonna repeat rounds five and six until we hit a total of 11 rounds. And we're on round seven right now is what we're working on so repeat five and six for a total of 11 rounds we're on round seven right now so i'm going to go ahead and finish up until i make it till round 11. you should always have 60 stitches at the end of every round Okay, I have made it to the end of round 11, and you should have 60 stitches, and I went ahead and ended with a slip stitch into my first single crochet. Round 11 should have been where we did single crochet, triple crochet. Now, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start decreasing the hat. Every single crochet row is a decrease row, and we're just going to keep doing that until our hat reaches a point. So every time we do a single crochet row, we're going to take away four stitches every single time from now on. So you'll start to get the pattern here once we do it a couple times. So we're on uh, row 12 or round 12 right now. So we have 60 stitches and we want to take away four stitches from each round when we do the single crochet row. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one single crochet into the next 13 stitches and then we'll do a decrease. So we'll start by putting one single crochet into this very first stitch and that counts as one. So we need to do 13 in a row. It's so one, two, three, 
four. Okay, there's 13 single crochets in a row. And now we're gonna do a single crochet decrease over the next two stitches. So we're gonna go into the next stitch and drop a loop. And then go into the next one and drop a loop. Yarn over and go through the three loops on your hook. And that took two stitches and made it into one. Now we're gonna repeat it again. One single crochet into the next 13 stitches. There's 13. Now we're gonna single crochet decrease over the next two. So go into the next one and drop a loop. And then the next one, drop a loop. Three loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all three loops. Now we're just gonna repeat that all the way around back to the beginning. One single crochet into the next 13 stitches and then you single crochet decrease over the next two. And just repeat that pattern until you make it back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it all the way around at the end of round 12. Your last stitch should have been a decrease, and now you should have four stitches less than you did the round before. So we had 60 the round before, so now we should have 56 stitches. And we're gonna go ahead and end with a slip stitch into our first single crochet, just like that. Now, this, now the single crochet row is the only row that we decrease on. So we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're gonna do our single crochet, triple crochet row, but we're not gonna do any decreases. We're just gonna do it like we've been doing it. So we're gonna go ahead and single crochet back into that first stitch, and then triple crochet into the next. Single crochet, and then triple crochet. single crochet and triple crochet and we just repeat this pattern all the way around back to the beginning single and triple single and triple okay I've made it to the end of round 13 and since we did not decrease, you should still have 56 stitches. Remember, we only decrease on the single crochet rows. So we'll go ahead and end with this slip stitch into our first single crochet, chain one, and turn our work. Now we're gonna decrease because we're gonna be doing a single crochet row. So remember, we have to take away four stitches. So last time we did 13 single crochets in a row, and then we did a single crochet decrease. This time we're gonna do 12 in a row and then we're going to do the decrease so we're going to just going to go ahead and go right back into that first stitch single crochet we're going to do 12 in a row that's one two three There's 12. Now I'm going to decrease over the next two. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and drop a loop and then into the next one and drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three. Again, 12 in a row.
There's 12. Now we're going to decrease over the next two. Now we're going to repeat this pattern of 12 single crochets and then they decrease all the way around back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it to the end and your last stitch should have been a decrease. So you want to go ahead and end by slip stitching into your first single crochet and now you should have four less stitches than you did the previous round. So we had 56. Since we decreased four, we'll have 52 now. Okay, that ended round 14. Now round 15, we're gonna chain one and turn. Now we're gonna do our single crochet, triple crochet row. We do not decrease on this row. So we just single crochet right back into that very first stitch and then triple crochet into the next. Single crochet and triple crochet. Single and triple. And we just repeat this pattern all the way around until we get back to the beginning. Just like that. Okay, I've made it to the end of round 15. End with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. Since we did not decrease that round, we still should have 52 stitches. So we're gonna chain one and turn, and now is our single crochet round, and this is where we do our decrease. So um, last single crochet round, we did 12 single crochets in a row, and then we did the decrease. Now we're gonna do 11. So the first one was 13 in a row, and then we did a decrease. The next, the last one was 12 single crochets in a row, and then we did a decrease. This one's going to be 11 single crochets in a row, and then we're going to do the decrease. So that's how the decreases are going to work. So go ahead and put one back in that very first stitch, and you want to do 11 in a row. There's 11, and then single crochet decrease over the next two. Eleven in a row again. decrease and we're going to go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around until we get back to the beginning okay i've made it to the end there and now we should have four less stitches than we did the previous row so we had 52 so now we should have 48 stitches we're going to go ahead and end with a slip stitch into our first single crochet chain one and turn and now we do not decrease on this round this is the round we do our single crochet triple crochet so we just go ahead and single crochet into our first stitch and triple into the next. Single crochet into the next and triple into the next. So we're just going to repeat this all the way around until we get back to the beginning. Triple and single, triple, and single. Okay, I went ahead and made it to the end, and you want to go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. And we didn't decrease, so we still should have our 48 stitches. That, chain one and turn. So you can tell it's kind of slowly starting to div in. So we're just going to kind of decrease in the same, work in the same manner that we've been doing until we can't do it anymore. So the last round we did 11 single crochets in a row and then we did our single crochet decrease. This round is going to be 10 single crochets in a row 
and then we'll do our decrease. So go ahead and start off by putting your first single crochet right there in the first stitched. Do 10 in a row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's 10 and then we decrease over the next two stitches and then we're just going to repeat this all the way around one single crochet in the next 10 and then decrease back to the beginning okay i've made it to the end and every time you do a single crochet row you should always end in a decrease so now we'll have four less stitches than we did the round before so we had 48 on the last round now we're going to have 44. end with the slip stitch into our first single crochet chain one and turn and now you probably know what to do single crochet right back into that very first stitch and triple crochet into the next so there's no decreasing when we do this part single crochet and triple crochet now the smaller your hat gets it's going to be a little harder working this round from the back side you kind of got to wiggle it around just to warn you but you'll be able to get it triple crochet single crochet triple crochet and single crochet all the way around back to the beginning okay I made it back around again we did not decrease that round remember so we still should have our 44 stitches go ahead and end with the slip stitch into our first single crochet chain one and turn and now we're going to do our single crochet row where we decrease again so the previous single crochet row we did 10 single crochets and then we did a decrease now we do nine single crochets and then we do a decrease so that's a pattern we're going to repeat for the hat till we can't do it anymore you know till we get up to we can't decrease anymore so nine single crochets decrease all the way around and then you We'll have four less stitches than you did your previous row. Um, and then you do your triple crochet, single crochet, and then you turn your work. And then it'll be eight single crochets in a row. And then you decrease four less stitches than you did the previous row. And then you do your triple crochet, single crochet, turn your work, always turn your work. And then it'll be seven single crochets and then the decrease. So every time you, you're at a decrease row, it's always just, um, like now we're getting ready to do nine the next one will be eight then it'll be seven then it'll be six between the decreases until you can't do it anymore so just go ahead and repeat the pattern like we've been doing until you get all the way to the top of your hat all right i have made it to the top and from the very first row all the way up i stopped at row 37 and row 37 is a row of um triple crochet single crochets so I got a little hole there at the top. Now for uh, 38, I'm just going to chain one and turn. Now I'm not going to decrease on this last round. You can if you want. If you want to make it like up to as far as you go can go, that's fine. I mean, it ain't going to do anything. I'm just going to go ahead and work one single crochet in every stitch around here on this row. <clears throat> but if you want to just keep decreasing until, you know, there's nothing left, that's fine. And then after I get this done, I'm going to tie it off and sew that top shut. So remember, this is uh, row 38 I'm on, and I'm not doing any decreases, but it's no big deal if you do. If you can keep decreasing, that's fine. All right, then when I get around, I'm just going to end with a slip stitch into my first single crochet. I'm going to tie off, but I'm going to leave a long tail so I can sew the top together. Like that. So, here's a hat so far. So, you, you'll have a little bit of a hole at the top, which is fine. Just take your yarn needle and use your tail and sew up that top. Or if you're putting a pom-pom on, you can sew it on now if you want. Or I am putting a pom-pom, but I'm not going to sew mine on. I'm probably just going to glue mine on since this is just kind of a novelty hat. 
I'm not going to worry about sewing on my pom-pom. But you can if you want. See, I'm just kind of hiding my tail. But as I'm hiding my tail, I'm just kind of sewing out the hole at the top together. Just like that. And then you just want to clip that yarn. One more thing I'm going to do before I decorate the tree is I'm going to go around the bottom one more time. So I'm going to take my uh, dark brown, the color I use for my trunk, and I'm going to start just somewhere near the back where we started in the beginning. So just somewhere near here and just start uh, in any stitch. I'm just going to clean up that last row. So I'm going to chain one, go back into that same spot and single crochet. And now I'm just going to work one single crochet in every stitch all the way around just to get this, uh, make it look a little cleaner here at the bottom. I'm going to do this all the way around, one single in every stitch until I get back over here to my starting point. Okay, once you make it back around to the beginning, you just want to go ahead and end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. Now you should have 60 stitches here, but if you don't, that's okay. Just somewhere close to that will be fine. And go ahead and tie that off and hide that tail. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a second and hide all my tails real quick. Okay, once you get all your tails hidden, you are done. Now you can decorate it any way you want. The possibilities are endless. But what I'm using to put my decoration on is just a hot glue gun. That's all I'm using. Since, like I said, it's just novelty pretty much. Hot glue is fine. I think hot glue and yarn, you can hardly ever get it apart whenever you put them together anyway. So um, I'm just going to dec decorate mine with like these little pom-poms. But you can use anything you want. You can put um, lights, uh, anything. And then I got this pom-pom to put on the top, bigger one for a pom-pom, which I'll probably just glue. Like I said, you can sew that on though if you want. But that's all. I'm just going to decorate mine like this. Little hot glue. And then when you stick them on though, put your finger underneath them so it don't go through to the other side. And that's what I'm going to do. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. If you make this, I'd really love to see a picture of it. I'd really love to see how you decorate it. I think it'd be so cool with lights. But I didn't get any to put on mine. But uh, also, don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. I have hundreds of them. All kinds of stuff. So, until next time, have a good day and have fun decorating this hat up. This is Crystal. So I'm going to show you how to crochet this uh, poinsettia. Or it's my version of a poinsettia. I know there's tons of them out there, but this is just my version. I've been making them actually and kind of just setting them up in, inside my Christmas tree. And they look pretty cool. But they'll show you how big they are. About the size of my hand. So let's go ahead and get started on it. Okay, for this project, I'm just using scrap yarn that I have. Like I have some scrap cotton here. And then I actually have some a roll of just some sparkly yarn that I have so any type of like scrap yarn will work good and it doesn't even it's just all my yarn it doesn't even have to be the same like I'm using cotton and acrylic so it doesn't even have to be the same and I'm going to be using a size H which is a five millimeter crochet hook <clears throat> okay I'm going to start off with a slip knot on your hook And I'm starting with the yellow, which will be the center of the poinsettia. Now I'm going to do a chain of four. And now I'm going to go right back into the very first stitch to form a ring. And you can use the magic circle here if you want. I'm just going to do a slip stitch like that. And I'm going to start off by chaining one. And now I'm going to work ten double crochets through the center of the ring. So I'm going to yarn over and go through the center, pull my yarn back through, and then I'm going to do my double crochet. And I'm going to do that 10 times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
four. Once you get your 10 double crochets through the center of the ring, we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into our first double crochet. Not that chain one we did, but the very first double crochet. Go ahead and slip stitch through there, and then we can tie this collar off. Pull it through, tie it off, like that. Now you can usually pull your tail, and it'll close up that circle a bit, that center circle. And then what? you could sew it in the rest of the way at the end. So now I'm going to start with my next color. Remember, you don't have to use red. You can use any color you want to make it. One side is they're all different colors. I saw a real pretty blue in it at Walmart the other day. The sparkles on it. Okay. Now you can start your yarn in any stitch that you like. So just go ahead and start your yarn like that. I just pull it through to start it. And then I'm going to hide my tail as I go. Now I'm going to start off with a chain of six. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook. Like that. And now I'm going to slip stitch in every stitch for the length of my chain. So I should have five slip stitches when I get done. That's two, three, four, and then your very last one makes five, like that. And that way, this is going to be the center of our leaf. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the next stitch, and I'm going to slip stitch into the next. So skip this one and slip stitch into the next and then again I'm going to do a chain of six one two three four five six and I'm going to start by slip stitching in the second stitch from the hook and then I'm going to slip stitch in every sti remaining stitch so you should have a total of five slip stitches so that's two three, four, and five. That's two of the start of the petals. So these are going to be the center of the petals. So now we're going to skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the next. So skip this one, slip stitch this, and this one. And again we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to start by slip stitching in the second stitch from the hook, and then slip stitch in every stitch for the length of the chain, just like that. And that's kind of the repeat that we're going to do all the way around. So I'm going to skip my next stitch. Let's see, I'm in this one. I'm going to skip uh, this one and slip stitch into the next. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Chain six. slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook and then every stitch along the chain skip the next stitch slip stitch into the next chain six one two three four five six, slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook, and every stitch of the chain, just like that, and now you should have five of these going to be petals here, and you should have one stitch to slip, to skip, 
just go ahead and skip it and just slip stitch back into the very first stitch that you started into like that now we're going to work up and back down each one of these pieces or each one of these little gonna be petals so we're going to jump to the first one and we're going to work on this side and then on this side so working on the very first side of the chain we're going to put one single crochet right here in the very first stitch so since we chained six and then we had five slip stitches down the side it was going to be five stitches up and five stitches back down so the very first one's right here go ahead and single crochet into the first one like that and now we're going to go ahead and half double into the next remember we're just working on one side of the, the chain so that's two stitches and now we're going to double crochet into the next that's three double crochet into the next that's four stitches we've done now the last stitch up here at the top we're going to put three double crochets into it so i'm going to yarn over oops there's one two and three on this third one i'm going to do a pico so what i'm going to do is chain three and then I'm going to slip stitch right back into the same double crochet. I always go kind of like right here and right here. I think it makes the pico look better. Just go ahead and slip stitch through there. Just like that. Now I'm going to work on the five slip stitches that we did down the, this side. So you turn your work and I'm going to put two double crochets into the first slip stitch on this side. There's one and two. Now I'm going to put one double crochet into the next slip stitch. One double crochet into the next slip stitch. One half double into the next slip stitch. I know it's kind of hard to see the stitches but if you just look closely you'll see them and then one single crochet right down here into the last slip stitch just like that and that forms our first poinsettia petal now what I'm gonna do is jump to the next set over here and it's very now we're gonna work the five stitches up this side and the five stitches back down the other so this very first one I'm going to jump to it and I'm going to do a single crochet. There's one and I'm going to do a half double into the next two stitches. Oops. And now I'm going to do a double into the next. That's three stitches. A double into the next. That's four stitches. And then the last one, I'm going to do three doubles with the Pico, just like we did before. So there's one, two, three, and I'm going to chain three to do my Pico. And I'm going to go back down and slip stitch kind of right here. I grab the side stitches and slip stitch, and that forms that little Pico, that point. Now I'm going to work down the five slip stitches on this side and I'm going to put two double crochets in the first one. There's one and two and I'm going to put a double one double crochet in the next. One double crochet in the next. A half double in the next. And then a single crochet into the last. 
Target and these lip the slipstitch side here. There we go. Just like that. And that is our second petal. Now we're going to jump over to the next one and we're going to do it again. We're going to jump over to the first one and single crochet right into it. And we're going to work up the five stitches up this side and the five slip stitches down the other side. So that was one single crochet. Now the next one is one half double and then a double and the next a double again in the next and then the last one is three doubles with the pico so there's one two three and then we do our pico go back into the top of it and slip stitch and now we start working back down the other side the slip stitch side we're going to do two doubles into the first slip stitch one two one double into the next one double into the next one half double into the next and then a single crochet into that last slip stitch it's probably the hardest stitch to get i think oh we split it there we go just like that and that is our third petal now we're just going to repeat this for the last two petals here let me pull it up and show you and this is what it starts to look like and don't worry about it looking having these line uh, yarn strung across like that it's supposed to look like that we'll take care of that on the next row so i'm going to go ahead and finish out my last two petals and then we'll start the second row so i'm just going to jump over here to the next one and start with a single crochet and then i'm going to work my way up and back down Okay, once you get your five petals made, that's what it looks like so far. I just did my last single crochet and my last petal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working in these yellow double crochets, the ones that we skipped. So here's my last petal and I did my last single crochet. If you pull them apart, you can see the double crochet that you didn't go in the first time that you skipped. And I, what I want to do is go in it, and I'm also going to grab this, these little strands of yarn that are hanging over. So, I'm going to just go right into it, making sure that this strand of yarn is above my needle and not below it. So go right into it, the very next one, or the, you should be right at the one that you skipped. First one you skipped. So just go right into it and slip stitch like that now what we're going to do is we're going to do another row of petals and we're going to do them the same way except for we're going to make them longer so this time we're going to do a chain of nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine and now i'm going to slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook so that's one and for the length of the chain we should have eight slip stitches we chain nine slip stitch in a second from the hook and then we should have a total eight all the way down so that was my first one and this is two three four five six seven and eight is my last one just like that now what i'm going to do is look for my next stitch that i skipped behind this petal you can see it right there what i'm going to do is pull this petal back 
and I'm going to slip stitch into it but I'm going to grab this straggly yarn right here see it this little straggly yarn that red piece I'm going to pull my petal forward and I'm going to go into this double crochet that I stitched <clears throat> that I skipped but I'm going to go under that yarn and then go through the stitch that meant that way that yarn is behind and it's not straggling and now I'm going to slip stitch like that and if you pull it back you can see that yarns behind now so see how they're in, it's in front here when you do that it goes behind and it makes it look a lot better so now I'm going to do my chain nine one two three four five six seven eight nine slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook and then one slip stitch for the length of the chain so you should have eight slip stitches that's two right there three four five six seven and eight now I'm going to go to my next double crochet that I skipped you just got to kind of look for it and it's right here so what I want to do is see the straggly yarn in front I'm going to pull my petal back grab that straggly yarn like that and then go through the stitch that I skipped and slip stitch and then I'm going to do my chain of nine one two three four five six seven eight nine slip stitch in the second from the hook and then every stitch for the length of the chain you'll have eight slip stitches so this is basically what we just did the previous round or previous row we're just making making the petals bigger this time around like that now we're going to find the next double crochet that we skipped it's right here and there you want to grab this one little straggly yarn that's right in front you can see it right there how it kind of hangs in front yeah right there you can see it so I fold this back and then I grab that yarn from back here like that and then I go into my next stitch that I skipped and slip stitch and then I do my chain of nine six seven eight nine slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook and then every stitch for the length of the chain like that and then we're going to go to the next one which will be our last one because you'll have five again find the next stitch that you skipped which is right here and you look and you see this one little yarn hanging right in front we don't want it to hang out in front so when we pull it back we're going to grab that yarn like that and then we're going to go into the stitch that we skipped and slip stitch and then we do our chain of nine again and then slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook one slip stitch in every stitch for the length of the chain the beginning and we're gonna slip stitch into the same one we started into but if you see this uh, 
uh, one last struggle yarn there. We want to grab that as we slip stitch back into the same stitch. So we just pull our petal down, grab that yarn, and then slip stitch back into the same stitch that we started into. I know it's hard to see them, but it is hard right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to be working in these petals, or these petal centers again. Should have five of them, just like before. And we're going to do it pretty much the same. It's like the same, but it's just going to have a different amount of stitches. So, we're going to jump to our first one, and we're going to put a single crochet. Remember, we're going to do the eight stitches up the side, and the eight slip stitches down the other side. And whenever you just ended that last row, if you didn't get it in the exact right spot, it's okay. Because it's really hard to tell. It's not going to make a difference. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and slip stitch, in, or single crochet into your very first stitch of this chain. Single crochet. Now I'm going to half double into the next. I'm going to half double into the next. You should have eight eight stitches to take up so that was three and now I'm going to double on to the next it's four double on to the next it's five double on to the next it's six now I'm going to put two doubles into the next one two so that took up seven stitches. Now we got one stitch up here and what we're going to do is we're going to put four doubles in it. One, two, three, four, and now we're going to do a pico like we did before. So we're going to chain three, come back down and slip stitch into that top of that double crochet. I always grab that top side top stitch and then the side stitch and now we're going to go and we're going to start working down the eight slip stitches of this side so we're going to put three single crochets into the first one one two and three now we're going to put two double crochets into the next one two and now we're going to put a double crochet into the next one double crochet into the next one double crochet into the next double into the next half double into the next and then we'll single crochet into the last that's always the hardest one to get I think is that last single crochet on the slip stitch side like that and that is our first big petal now every petal is going to be worked the same now we're going to be working the eight stitches up this side and then the eight slip stitches down this side so we'll start by single crocheting into the first stitch and then half double into the next half double into the next double into the next double into the next double into the next and then it's two doubles into the next one one Two, and then the last one is going to be four double crochet up here in this last part. 
So there's one, two, three, four, and then we're going to put chain three and put a pico on it. So chain three, come back up and slip stitch into the top, and that'll form that pico. Now we're going to work in the eight sti slip stitches down the other side, and we're going to put three doubles into the first one. There's one, two, three, two doubles into the next one, one, two, and then one double into the next, one double into the next, one double into the next, one half double into the next, one half double into the next, and then it's one single crochet into the last, which is always the hardest one for me anyways. Like that. Like that. And now we got our second big petal. And now we're going to work again in the next one. So move all your stitches back and we're just going to repeat that for the remainder, remaining three uh, petals. So what we'll just do is jump over to the first one. Uh, and single crochet into it. And now again we're going to half double into the next, half double again into the next one, and then one double into the next, one double into the next, one double into the next, two doubles into the next, one, two, and then the last one is going to get three, or I'm sorry, four doubles, two, three, four, and a pico, we chain three, and then slip stitch right back into the top of it to form that little point, and now we're going to work eight slip stitches down the side, the first one is going to get three double crochets, one, two, three, and the next one will get two doubles, one, two, and then a double into the next, one, and then a double into the next, one, and then a double into the next, one, and then a half double into the next, and then a half double into the next, and then the last one will be a single crochet. Okay, you should have two little uh, these little things to make two more petals. So we're just going to repeat what we've been doing. Just going to jump over to the first one and start with our single crochet. And then we're going to work our stitches up these eight and our stitches down these eight slip stitches. And then we're going to do the same for the last one. Okay, once you did your last petal, I just did my single, last single crochet. I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch right here into this next little spot here just to end it like that and then I'm going to pull up and I'm going to clip my yarn and I'm going to tie it off and I'm going to hide all these tails. Once you get all the tails clipped, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, I hope you're able to follow along okay. I know it's a little bit kind of 
hard probably to go down, down both sides, but once you get it, it's it's really easy. Um, don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. Until next time, have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this super sized stocking. It's really soft. It's made with like a <clears throat> jumbo Chanel yarn. Um, it's about 24 or 25 inches long and approximately 11 inches wide. So it's pretty big. It's actually pretty cool. Um, this was a request from somebody, so I hope they like it. Um, I hope it's kind of what they had in mind. Um, it has a little hanger on it and in addition to the yarn that, that you need if you want to put decorations on it you can um, I got like a whole set of these little poinsettias at Walmart for like a dollar and then this thing I got for a dollar too and you're gonna need um, if you decide to put decorations on it you're gonna need um, a low heat hot glue gun and some hot glue <clears throat> but other than that it's actually really pretty easy so let's go ahead and get started on it Okay, for this project, I am using, this is Mainstay, it's Walmart's brand. Um, it's Chanel Chunky Yarn, and it's super soft. I don't really like the regular Walmart Mainstay that well. I don't really know why, it just feels a little bit cheap to me. But this one I actually do like. It's, it's really, really soft. Now, this is a medium weight. It says it's, it's a six yarn. Now, it's actually a jumbo, six jumbo, so it's not going to be like this super bulky number six. They're not, they're not the same, so if you can tell. So this, if you have a bulkier or something, it's not going to work. You need to get a jumbo yarn, and if you don't have this, another one, it would be like the Red Heart Irresistible. I believe it's in number seven jumbo, and that will work too but you need to get some type of jumbo yarn like this um, anything smaller is not going to work out not for this pattern that I'm doing anyways and there are 31 yards per skein and you're going to need three skeins so well not all of three but you're going to need three to finish the stocking and then I'm using a big needle or a big hook here it is a size, you probably can't even read it. Well, it's a size Q, there it is, um, which is a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook. Now, you can use this something somewhere along the lines of this if you don't have exactly this size. Um, <clears throat> maybe one size bigger would be fine, or one size smaller would probably be, be, be okay, but you need to stick uh, close to this size right here. But these hooks right here, you can buy them at Walmart, the size Q, relatively cheap, so. Okay, first off, I'm going to tell you that this yarn, if you're using this, it's not very easy to work with. But, it is really pretty, and it's really soft, so it, it would it's going to make it worth it. So you want to start with a slip knot on your hook. And now we're going to start off with the chain of 20. Now this isn't going to be hard, the only hard, hard pattern or anything, the only hard part is working with this yarn. So what I always do is with this big thick stuff, when I go to do the chain, I always put my finger here, that way it doesn't, this, this finger here, that way it doesn't get too tight. And then when you go to put single crochet, single crochet through it later, uh, if it gets too tight you won't be able to so I keep my finger there that way it stays loose and it makes it easier to work with when you go back through the stitches so go ahead and chain 20 there's three four five now you don't have to do it that way that's just kind of a, a tip maybe but if you know an easier way that's fine there's six Seven, eight. Okay, once you get your chain of 20 made, now normally I would say without twisting it, you want to kind of follow it down, but you really probably ain't going to be able to tell if you're twisting this chain or not. But do your best, try not to twist it, and we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch way down here to form one large ring. Yeah, it's kind of impossible to tell 
if you're twisting or not so just do your best and then go down there to the first stitch yeah, it's hard to tell and we'll slip stitch into it just like that okay so now we're going to do a chain of one and we're going to go right back into that same stitch right here that we slip stitched into and do a single crochet i think the biggest tip i can give you is just make sure you're using your fingers to keep these stitches loose because if they get tight it's real hard to to work with them so kind of pull that through and i still even when i do my single crochets i keep my finger there to keep it loose so that's one and you find your next stitch go into it do a single crochet I put my finger back here so it doesn't get extremely tight on me and there's two so I'm gonna work around putting one single crochet in each one of these 20 chain spaces that we did so when you make it back around, you need to have 20 single crochets when you get back to the beginning. So just like that. Okay, once you make it all the way around, back to the beginning, you should have 20 single crochets. And that's not counting that chain one we did, but 20 single all together. So what I'm going to do now is put a stitch marker here. So I'm just going to use this piece of yarn. Hopefully I don't get lost in this furry stuff. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to my very first single crochet I made. And really need to take your time and look for your stitches. Use your fingers to go through them and see. Here's one, here's two. That way you know you're getting the right, going in the right spot. But I'm going to jump over here to the first single crochet we made. You can see it right here if you put your finger here. Here's the chain one we did. We're not going to go into that. We're going to go into the single crochet here. And we're just going to do a single crochet into it. Like that. And now I'm going to put one single crochet around in every stitch again. Until I get back to my stitch marker. It'll probably be a little bit easier now. Because you'll be able to see feel the stitches better because when you were working that last row along that chain that's probably the hardest part seeing what you're doing but now you can really kind of just go along and fill your stitches with the, with your fingers so i'm going to work along putting one single crochet in every stitch until i get back to my stitch marker and i still should have 20 single crochets when I make it back around. Okay, I'm going to show you how to add another skein. Now, I don't know if this is correct, but this is how I do it. It's kind of pretty much the only way I can figure out how to do it. Just take two and kind of, you're going to have to tie a little small knot in them. That's the best way, I think, to do it. But, if you can think of a better way, let me know and write it down in the comment section. I'm always up for everybody else's ideas to improve. So, and then, just kind of like that, and just kind of just crochet that knot in and you won't even see that it's there. Okay, when you make it back around to your stitch marker and you have your 20 stitches, all you want to do is move your stitch marker up and then continue in rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. So you would just move this up, pull it out and move it here and work around putting one single crochet in every stitch until you get back to your stitch marker and you should always have 20 stitches. Now you want to work that until you get a total of um, eight rounds all together. So if you start from your first one, you can see, count them. One, you can kind of see your rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to make the heel. I'm going to attempt to make the heel. So once you get your eight rounds done and you still have your 20 stitches, 
and you make it back to your stitch marker, what you want to do is pull it out then and move it up. Now I'm going to do a one single crochet in the first seven stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, running out of room, and seven. Now I'm going to work one double crochet into the next six stitches. So I did seven single in a row and now I'm going to do six double. So I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch and do just a double crochet. So there's one. I'm going to do it six times. That's one. Two. Three. Four, five, one more here. I kind of feel like I'm in a wrestle, wrestling match. It's <laughs> wrestling this yarn down. And there's six. Okay, so you did your seven singles. And then six doubles, and now I'm going to go ahead and finish out and put one single crochet, one single, into the last seven stitches. So there's one, two, three. Okay, I made it back to my stitch marker, and you can see here's where we put the doubles. It's kind of curving. Now, that was row nine. Now, what we're going to do for row ten is we're going to repeat row nine again. So we're just going to do what we did before. We're going to do that one more time. So we're going to move our stitch marker up and then it's one single crochet into the first seven stitches. And now it's one double crochet into the next six stitches, just like before. One. Oops. Two. Three, four, five, and one more is six. So seven singles, six doubles, and now I'm going to finish off by putting one single crochet into the last seven stitches until I make it to my stitch marker. Okay, I made it to the end of round 10. That was a repeat there that we did. The double crochets in the corner. Now we're just going to go back to putting one single crochet in every stitch. So I'm going to move my stitch marker up. And I'm just going to continue working around now. Putting one single crochet in every stitch. No more doubles. Just singles. And we're going to be working rounds of that again. like that. And you want to work that until you get around, back around to your stitch marker. Okay, 
whenever you make it back to your stitch marker, all you want to do is move that up and what you want to do, um, continue doing rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. And remember, you should always have 20 stitches at the end of each row. And you want to continue that for um, six rounds here at the end. So I'll stop here for a minute and I'll show you what we have. We'll have 16 total right now. So we started with um, the eight rows of single crochet one two three four five six seven eight and then we worked on the heel so nine and ten was the ones that we did the double crochets for the heels and then 11 12 13 14 15 16 these last six are one single crochet in every stitch now i'm going to start to make it just a little bit smaller at the bottom okay so for row 17 i'm around 17 i'm going to start decreasing so i'm going to move my stitch marker up now I'm going to put one single crochet into the first four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And now what I'm do what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip one stitch, and then I'm going to put one single crochet in the next four stitches again. So I'm just going to skip the next stitch. Go to over to the next one, and now I'm going to work one single crochet again in the next four stitches. So that was one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So I'm going to skip one again, and then do one single crochet into the next four. So I'm going to skip this one, and one. Two, three, four, skip one, All right, skip the next one, one single crochet into the next four, one, two, three and four now you'll have one stitch that remains you want to skip that one so we'll just stop here and you'll you'll have 16 stitches here not counting this last one because it's going to be skipped so what you want to do is for that was round 17 for round 18 we're going to move the stitch marker up but remember we're skipping this one right here so go ahead and move it up and we're going to put one single crochet into the first three stitches this time so skipping this this last one we'll go to the first one over here and we'll put three single crochets in a row so there's one two and three and now we'll skip one skip the next one three single crochets in a row again there's one two, three, skip the next one, three single crochets in a row again, one, two, three, skip the next one, Skip, and then three single crochets again, one, two, three, and again you'll have one at the end before the stitch marker that will need to be skipped right here. So not counting this, this stitch here because it's going to be skipped. You'll have 12 this time around. So we're going to move our stitch marker up, put it here, remember we're skipping that last one. So now we're going to put two single crochets, so skip this last one. So we'll jump over to the next, there's one and two, and then skip one, and then two in a row, 
There's one. And two. And then skip one. It's getting kind of tight. And then one. And two. And then skip one again. And then two in a row again. Wait a minute. Skip that one and then two in a row. One. And two. And again, you'll have one stitch at the end here that needs to be skipped. Okay, and not counting this stitch here that needs to be skipped, you'll have eight stitches. So don't count this one, you'll have eight around. Now, I'm not going to do it anymore. What I'm going to do is sew the end shut now. So you can take... What I'm going to do is just actually skip that stitch and slip stitch into the next one. And then that'll end that. So skip that one. Slip stitch into the one over here after the stitch marker. And now all I'm going to do is just kind of close it up. So clip your yarn and clip it along. along leave a long tail. Pull it through. So I already, you can just break it real easy, but I already did mine like this. Now what I'm going to do is put these ends together and just kind of, and there's not really no needle, I don't think that's going to, oops, sorry about that, that's going to work. This is the biggest one I have. It might go through it, but just in case you don't have a big one, all you really need to do is hold your stitches together at the ends and kind of take your tail see where my tail is at here and sew these ends together by using the tail like this pulling it through and then go to the other the back side of it and go through this stitch into the next stitch grab your tail pull it through and then go over here to the next stitch on this side into the next stitch on the other side and grab your tail and pull it through the good thing about this yarn being so thick you can't really tell if you mess up or miss a stitch <laughs> and now go again if you see another stitch over here that needs to be sewed up go through grab your tail pull it through and now you're also hiding your tail in by doing this too like that so that's kind of how i'm going to make my bottom end sew up now, if you want to take this and do that a couple more times, another time across, just to get your end, your tail sewn in really good, I might do it one more time. Go through and grab my tail and pull it out the other end, just so it doesn't come undone. We don't want it coming undone, but I doubt that it will, but you never know, I guess. But this is the way you kind of hide your tails with this yarn. We're sewing the bottom shut and hiding the tails. You can take that stitch marker out. Don't need that anymore. I don't even know why it was still hanging around. It wanted to be part of the stocking. But it can't because it was orange. Like that. And then when you get it all done, you can clip that yarn off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the top and clean this up and make a hanger real quick. So we're almost done. Okay, so to go around the top, you're going to work opposite side of where I started, but we're going to make the hook. So we're going to start, move this over with the slip stitch on our hook, and we're going to do a chain of six, or however big you want your hanger to be. But one, two, three, four, five, and six like that now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna slip stitch into my first single crochet and that is going to be my hanger okay like that now with this hanger still with this on your hook you want to just start in any one of these stitches here along the edge go into it and just do a go right through it and slip stitch this on like that now chain one now go back into that same stitch and do a single crochet there we go 
now you got a hanger. Now what I'm going to do is just work one single crochet in every stitch all the way across the top. Now you should have 20 since we started with 20. But just go ahead and remember, let me move this over here. It's going to be a little difficult to see the stitches because you're working around the beginning base chain. But just do your best to just kind of use your finger to get fill around and make sure you get all the stitches. So I'm going to go all the way around until I get back to the beginning. Okay, I've made it all the way around and like I said, you should have 20 single crochets. Now what I'm going to do is, okay, here's the hanger. Now remember we slip stitched it on and then we single crocheted into that first stitch. I want to slip stitch into that single crochet that we did, the very first one. I'm actually going to go behind, pull the hanger up and go behind it and slip stitch into that first single crochet right here. That way the hanger kind of stays upright. So I just kind of went behind the hanger and now I'm going to slip stitch and then clip this yarn off. Pull it through. <clears throat> now the hanger is kind of upright a little bit more. Now if you don't want your hanger that big, you know, like I said, you can always make it ever many chains you want. But now any tails that you have remaining we already, I already did my bottom one. I still got to clip it off. But any tails up here that you have remaining, you just want to take them and weave them in around the top area here. So that's what I'll do. I'll just grab this one, pull it through. That's the best way to get rid of these tails. This is kind of weave them in the best that you can. Unless, of course, you have a big old hook that will, that will you can use to sew them in. So I'm going to go ahead and weave this one in, and then I'm going to weave this other one in here, the very beginning one that was hooked to our chain. Okay, I went ahead and glued these decorations on. Remember, you want to make sure you use low heat hot glue gun so you don't melt your yarn. But that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. It's actually pretty easy, I thought. Um, the yarn was, I guess, it wasn't too bad. Not as bad as I thought in the beginning. It actually got a lot easier to work with. So um, you can always check me out on Instagram. I'll put a link to that too um, and I'll put a link to where you can get the written pattern for this and until next time have a good day hi everybody this is Crystal so today I'm going to show you how to make this um, advent calendar it's not, I guess it's not really a calendar it's garland to hang on your tree and it's got these little pouches here that you can put um, candy or treat or what you know whatever you put in an advent calendar and it's hooked on with these little clothes pins on a piece of twine and the numbers are oh man I'm really bad at it embroidering on numbers so they really really look kind of funny but if you you don't have to do it the way I did it I am not good at that um, if you're good at it though um, they look they look nice when they're embroidered on if you could do it better than me um, otherwise you know you can use fabric um, paint or anything you know uh, foam stickers whatever you can find for the numbers we probably you know you even have to put numbers on them I guess but uh, it's just made out of scrap yarn just all kinds of scrap yarn that I have so what you you know you need scrap yarn just you know don't take very much for each sack some twine or something to hook it to um, and I got these little clothes pins. You don't have to get them, but they were only a couple of dollars for this whole bag. And I kind of just strung them on there, and now you can hang them up to your tree like that. So I'll show you how to make a sack real quick, real easy. Now, all the scrap yarn that I used was Red Heart Super Saver or that Walmart's Mainstay new brand. It's just, they, it was all four ply acrylic you don't have to do that you can use uh, cotton or anything it, all different kinds of yarn to make it look cool but 
And then I used a size G, which is a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, what you want to do is start out with a chain of 12. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Go ahead and single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. And then single crochet one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of your chain Okay, when you make it to the last chain, go ahead and put two single crochets into that last chain. So two into the last one. And now what I'm going to do is kind of just flip my work and I'm going to start working on the opposite side of the chain. So I'm going to jump over here to the next stitch. Not this one here because <clears throat> that's the one that we put two in. Make sure you jump to the next one. And I'm going to start putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the last stitch on this side. Okay, when you get to the last stitch over here, it's not going to be this little chain space that, remember, we uh, single credit shade and the second stitch from the hook. It's not going to be that one stitch that we skipped. It's going to be this one right here. And you want to put two single crochets into that. And now you should have 22 stitches. And what we're going to do is use a stitch marker. <clears throat> Mine's not from here. I always got yarn tails laying on the floor. I'm going to use this piece of yarn and stick it right there. So once you counted and you got 22 stitches, you want to jump all the way over here to your very first single crochet, this one right here, and single crochet into it, like that. And now I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch around now. No more two in the corner or anything. It's just one single crochet in every stitch around until I get to my stitch marker. These little slacks are easy. Kind of got to flip the corners because it starts to, to make it go the right way. Like that. I kind of tug on it, pull the corners out. That way it's a little bit easier to work with. Flip back out on me. And when you make it to your stitch marker, you should have 22 stitches still. That's what we're going to keep. 22 stitches when you make it to your marker. And if you counted and you have 22 stitches, Go ahead and pull it out and move it up and go around again. We want to do eight rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Right now, we're starting round three. So we want to do a total of eight. And you should have 22 at the end of every round. You have to keep flipping your corners up because they start to... But once you do a few more rounds, they'll, st they'll stay put. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my eight rounds real quick. Okay, I've got my eight rows done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm back on my stitch marker and I still have 22 stitches. So I'm going to move my stitch marker up and I'm going to do one row of decreases. I'm just going to decrease two times. So I'm going to put one single crochet into the first nine stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I'm going to decrease over the next two. 
So what I'm going to do is go into the next stitch, drop a loop, and then go into the next one, drop another loop, yarn over, and go through all three. That turned two stitches into one. Now I'm going to put one single crochet into the next nine stitches again. And you should have two stitches left and you want to go ahead and decrease over those last two. So go into the first one and drop a loop and go into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over and go through all three loops just like that. Now you'll have 20 stitches at the end of round nine. So I'm going to move my stitch marker up one more time and I'm going to go around putting one single crochet in every stitch. So when I make it back to my stitch marker at the end of round 10 here, I'll have 20 stitches. Okay, I'm coming up to my stitch marker, and you want to count and make sure you have 20 stitches. What I'm going to do is slip stitch into that next stitch, and I'll end round 10. I'm going to pull my marker out because I don't need it anymore. Okay, now I'm going to put the um, ribbing that's kind of on the edge of the top there, if you can see it. So what I'm going to do is chain two. Now that chain two is going to count as a half double crochet. Now I'm going to work one half double crochet in every stitch all the way back around till I get back here to this chain two. And I should have, when I make it back around, 20 stitches counting that chain two. Okay, once you make it back around and you have your 20 stitches counting this chain two, just go ahead and slip stitch into the top of that chain two. Now we're going to chain two again. Now that chain two is counting as a back post half double crochet. Now we're going to do a front post half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go around the post of the next stitch instead of the top of it, like that and do a half double crochet like that now the next stitch is going to be a back post half double crochet so we're going to yarn over and go from the behind and go around the stitch like that that way the post is on the back of your hook and then do your half double crochet the next one is a front post half double crochet so we yarn over and instead of working in the top of the stitch, we're just working around the post. And then half double. And this is what's putting that ribbing on the top. The next stitch is a back post half double. So come around from the behind the stitch. So your stitch, the post of the stitch is on the back of your hook. And then go ahead and finish out your half double. And then a front post half double crochet in the next. and then a back post half double crochet and then a front post and a back post and I'm going to repeat this all the way around until I get back to the beginning okay I'm coming around at the end of round 12 and you should have ended in a front post half double crochet and then we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the top of our beginning chain two and that'll end round 12 and now all we're going to do is make the hanger so what i'm going to do is slip stitch two times so slip stitch over two times this first one's always really hard to get 
So there's one and two. Now chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go back into, into that same exact stitch and slip stitch into it again. And then tie this off. Flip your yarn. Pull that tight. Now, I always kind of just stretch out my stack just a little bit the corners. And there it is. Now we just got to hide that tail. And this is how you make every sack. And just use all different colors. Or you can use all the same colors, whatever you want to do. It's your calendar. And kind of weave these in, weave in your tail here a little bit in the back. Is what it looks like it's pretty cute that's about the size of it and you can put whatever you want to put in it oh and if you want to embroider your numbers on I, you can just do that with whatever color of yarn you want or you can cut your numbers out of felt glue them on you can paint your numbers on uh, fabric paint you can um, poofy stickers um, um, I thought about getting they had some wooden beads and just writing the number on it and kind of just dangling it from here. Um, let your creativity rule. However you want to do the numbers is up to you. I started to embroider mine, but I actually think I'm not going to do that to all of them because I'm really not good at embroidering stuff. See, it looks funny. My six looks all funny. But that's it. And then I just had some twine. You don't have to use twine. You can use yarn, any type of string that you want. Um and string them on just, I strung them on like this you can make them all go the same way or different ways leave them however far apart you want I left about four inches in between mine and then I just took my little bitty clothespin and hooked it on like that and now you can hang on your tree like this like garland so the kids could have a lot of fun with that waking up and seeing what kind of treats in it every day now, some people, advent calendars, I've seen they only do 24, and they make the 24th one, like, special. I don't know. Some people do 25. You can do however many sacks you want, 24 or 25, because I've seen them done all for different ways. But that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget to check out all my other uh, videos. I got hundreds of them. Um, if you make this, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You can post a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. Um, and until next time, have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this tree skirt right here with all the fringe on it. You see? It's made with um, double crochet and front post triple crochet. So you can see the posts all line up there. And then it's got some single crochet up around the neck. It's got these square buttons, which you can unbutton and put it around your skirt. Or put, put it around your tree, I'm sorry, the buttons. Come on down here. I'm trying to do it one-handed, but... Anyways, they come undone like that. That way you can wrap it around your um, tree and then button it back on. They're uh, silver square buttons. And the fringe, which is always optional if you do not want to put that on. It's um, got six points on it. Now, it's quite large. Now, you can make it smaller, you know, if you wish, just by leaving off uh, more rows here. So, with the fringe on it, from one point to the next, counting the fringe, it's 72 inches. Now, from one point to the next point without the fringe, it's 62 inches. And then if you want to go from the flat side to another flat side with the fringe, it's 58 inches. And from flat side to the other flat side here, Without the fringe is 45 inches. 
so you can decide how big you want to make it but that's how big mine turned out remember friends is always optional i think it looks super cool though i like makes it look pretty old-fashioned so uh, let's go ahead and get started on this okay for this project i am using some yarn that i got from hershner's this is hershner's worsted eight holiday sparkle yarn and it's an eight ounce ball it's just a medium four weight 100 percent acrylic yarn and it's got the sparkles in it don't have to use this yarn any medium four weight yarn will work um let's see though there are ounces or 489 yards per ball now i went through i have uh, four colors here so i'll show you the colors i got um this one's called garnet Acru, evergreen and then this is the one i use for the fringe and it is called victorian christmas so those are the colors that i used now for the main for the main part of the christmas tree skirt without the fringe i used one whole one of these plus part of another so you're probably going to need about um let's see there's 489 yards per ball you're probably gonna need about 525 yards of three different colors if you want to do it like me so this say 1600 yards to be safe for the tree skirt part and for the fringe i went through about two and a half balls of those so seven 700 yards 750 yards if you want to add fringe so that's the total amount you're going to need so all together i would say just to be you know safe 2300 2400 yards total including fringe that's what you'll need now um buttons i got these at hobby lobby but you can use any type of buttons that you want these are the size of them here one and a quarter inch buttons and i just use regular yarn in a yarn needle to sew them on but you can use regular thread if you want to also and then i'm going to be using a size j which is a six millimeter crochet hook all right you want to go ahead and start off with a chain of 90. then what we're going to do is we're going to put one single crochet in the second chain from the hook remember we don't count the one that's on our, on our hook so go ahead and in the second chain and put one single crochet and now we're going to work across and we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just like this. So row one is one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. Okay, I've made it to the end of row one, and you should have a total of 89 stitches. So 89 is the number that you need to have. Okay, now we're going to start forming the points and the overhang that the buttons attach to. So we're going to head and chain one and turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. Never will it count as a stitch. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put one double crochet into the next nine stitches so our first one goes right here in the very very first spot so we want to do nine in a row so there's one two there's nine now in the next stitch we're going to form our first point so what we're going to do into the next stitch we're going to put two double crochets into the same stitch so there's one 
and two, and then we're going to chain two and put two more double crochets into the same stitch. So that's how the points are always formed, always the same way. Two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets all into the same stitch. Now I'm going to work one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. So one double into the next 13. So there's one. Two, three, four. Okay, so I got my 13 double crochets there in a row. So I'm, in the next stitch, I'm going to do another point. So I'm going to go right into the next stitch and I'm going to work two doubles, chain two, and two more doubles all into the same stitch and that will be my second point formed. Now I'm going to work one double crochet into the next 13 stitches again. Okay, I got my 13 double crochets in a row. So in the next stitch, I'm going to do another point. So I'm going to work two double crochets, a chain two, and two double crochets into the next stitch. Now again, I'm going to work one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. All right, I got my 13 stitches again. So I'm gonna put a point in the next stitch. So next stitch, I'm gonna work two doubles, chain two, and two more doubles, all into the same stitch. And again, I'm gonna work one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. Okay, I did 13 stitches again. I'm going to put another point into the next stitch. So two doubles, chain two, two doubles into the next stitch. And now one more time, I'm going to put one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. Okay, I did 13 stitches again. In the next stitch, I'm going to put my last point. So I'm going to put two double crochets, a chain of two, and two more double crochets, like that. And now you should have nine stitches that remain. Go ahead and put one double crochet into the remaining nine stitches. Okay, now at the end of row two, you should have a total of 107 stitches, and this is what it looks like. So you'll have um, six points, so two, four, six, and then here is your button over flap. There's three stitches on the side, three stitches on the side, so that'll over flap like that. So that's what it looks like. It'll look better when it gets bigger. Hopefully, I can only hope. <laughs> All right, um, let's start round three. Now, um, you can decide when you want to switch colors. That's that's up to you. So rows three and four are the repeat rows for the whole tree skirt. So it's just a two row repeat. It's pretty easy. So row three, we're gonna chain one and turn. 
we want to put one double crochet into the first four stitches this very first one counts as number one so go right back into that same stitch there so there's one two three and four now we are going to put a front post triple crochet into the next stitch so we're going to yarn over twice like we're doing a triple crochet but instead of going into the top of the stitch we're going to go around the post of it like that so where the post is on the front of our hook like that and then we go ahead and do our triple crochet like and now i'm going to do one just regular double crochet into the top of the next like that and we repeat the front post triple crochet regular double crochet until we get to our chain two space so again i'm going to do a front post triple crochet to the next stitch and then a regular double crochet in the top of the next And then we're going to do a front post triple crochet into the next. And then a regular double crochet in top of the next. And then we got one more here. We want to do a front post triple crochet around this last one before our chain two space. Now in the chain two space, and in every chain two space, we always do the same thing. We're always gonna work our point, which is two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets, just like that. Now, since we ended over here with a front post triple crochet before the chain two space, we wanna start out over here with a front post triple crochet after this chain two space. So go ahead and yarn over twice and do your front post triple crochet around that first stitch. And then a regular double crochet into the next. Front post triple crochet around in the next stitch there. And then a double crochet into the top of the next. And we're gonna repeat this front post triple crochet and then a regular double crochet. Just keep repeating them until we get to our next chain two space. like that you kind of seen the post they'll start to line up more better all right I've made it to my next chain two space and every time you get to your chain two space you should always end in a front post triple right before it so in this chain two space I'm going to do my point the same thing I'm gonna work two double crochets chain of two and two more double crochets so now I'm going to repeat what I just did across the whole piece. So here, until I get to this point, I do my triple crochet, front post triple crochet, double crochet, front post triple, double, all the way until I get to this point, and then I put my two doubles, chain two, two doubles, and then I do the same here to this point, the same here to this point, and the same here to the last point so we're just repeating this section right here on the rest of our points and i will meet back up with you when we get when you make it here to your last point and we'll finish this last piece out together so remember since we end in a front post triple we have to start our next part in a, with a front post triple so i'm just going to repeat it all over again front post triple and then double front 
post triple and then double front post triple and then double all the way to my chain two space and then it's two doubles chain two two doubles and then repeat I'm gonna, I'm gonna see you here at this last point all right I've come to my last point my last chain two space so I'm gonna go ahead and work my two double crochets and then a chain two and then two more doubles now I'm gonna start off with a front post triple crochet and then a double crochet into the next and then front post triple crochet I'm gonna repeat this until I get to my last four stitches so it's, we're repeating the front post triple regular double front post triple regular double until we get to our last four stitches So I'm at my last four. I just did a front post triple. I have four left and that is my four stitch overhang for my button. I'm going to put one double crochet in the remaining four stitches. That will end row three. This is what it looks like and you should have a total of 131 stitches. You will have 24 more stitches than you did the previous row. From now on, no matter what row you're on, you will always have 20 more, 24 more stitches than you did the row before. So since we had 107 before, now we have 131. So here is our four stitch here overhang on both sides. That's where we will put our buttons. So that's what it looks like now. Row four is pretty much the same, except for where you're gonna be working back post triple crochets. So we're gonna chain one and turn our work. So I'm gonna put one double crochet into the first four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to work a back post triple into the next stitch. If you look, it's the front post triple from the previous row. So we're just keeping our post stitches lined up. So the back post, you just go around the stitch from the back like this. Now this post of the stitch is on the back of your hook. And then you go ahead and do your triple crochet. And then I'm going to do double crochet into the next. Now we're going to do back post triple into the next. And double crochet into the next. And we're going to repeat this until we get to our first chain two space. So back post triple crochet. And then double, double crochet back post triple and double and then back post triple will always be the last stitch before the chain two space and then in the chain two space you want to work your point you want to work your two doubles chain two and two more doubles like that now we're going to start again since we ended in a back post triple we need to start over here in a back post triple so the first stitch is a back post triple and then a double into the next back post triple 
and then double into the next. Back post triple, and double into the next. And we're gonna repeat this until we get to our next chain two space. If you turn it over, you can see that the post stitches are staying lined up just like they're supposed to. And when you get more rows on them, you'll see them better. So back post triple. And double. Back post triple. And double until you get to your next chain two space. Okay, I've made it to my next chain two space. My last stitch before the chain two space was a back post triple crochet. So in the chain two space, I'm gonna work my point. I'm gonna work two doubles. Chain two and two more doubles. And then I'm gonna repeat what we did over here. Again, here, here, here here and I can meet you right here at this last point so remember since we ended in a front or back post triple here we have to start with a back post triple here so we're repeating what we just did remember it's basically the same thing as the last round except for we're working back post triple crochets instead of front posts it's not it's not hard at all so I'm going to continue repeating this until I get to the last point and that's where I'll meet up with you at. Okay, so I've made it to my last point, and I just did my two double, chain two, two double. Now I'm going to start by putting a back post triple into the next. And then a double into the next. And I'm going to repeat this sequence until I get to my last four stitches again. So back post, triple, and double. And then back post. I'll tell you, those back posts are a little bit more difficult than the front post. And then regular double. Back post triple. And then double. Do this to your last four. So I'm at my last four now. I just did a back post triple. I have four stitches left. You want to go ahead and end, always in with four double crochets in your last stitch. And that will end a row of four. Now you want, you're going to have 24 more stitches than you did the previous row. Always. So we had 131 last time, so now we should have 155. So now it's just a repeat of rows three and four there's your four stitches on this side four stitches on this side that's going to be our buttonhole row and that is what it's starting to look like now you need to determine where you want to do your color changes i'm going to do one after every repeat so Rows three and four are the repeat. So I did rows three and four in red. So I'm gonna tie off and I'm gonna do repeat rows three and four again in another color. Now when I tie change colors, I always tie off. If you don't do that, that's fine. You can change colors whenever you want and however you usually do it. But I always tie off. So I'm just turning my work here. Now the front side of my work is facing me. I'm just going to go ahead and add my new color. So for row five, I'm just going to repeat what we did on row two, but I'm just changing colors here. So I'm just going to start my new color in that first stitch, chain one, and then I'm just going to repeat 
row three. So it's one double into the first four stitches. It'd be pretty easy when you get the, once you get the hang of it. And remember, you change colors whenever and however often you want. You could do it one solid color would look beautiful. You could redo it, change colors every other row would look beautiful. Every five rows, whatever you want to do. It's your tree skirt, whatever you think looks great. But so now comes the task of repeating these rows and until we get our tree skirt as big as we want it to be. So I'm going to get busy. I'm not quite sure how many rows I'm going to do. But remember, we're just repeating rows three and four. I'm changing colors every uh, two rows now. Every repeat rows. Every two repeat rows. But whatever you want to do. Um, and you always have 24, stitch, 24 more stitches than you did the previous row. So I will let you know here in just one second. One second for you. Many, many hours for me later. <laughs> How many total rows I did. All right. <clears throat> I have done a total of 26 rounds. You can do more if you want, depending on however big you want your tree skirt to be. Or you can do less. That's up to you. But 26 was my total number that I did. And now I'm going to go around the top with some single crochet to clean up that top edge. <clears throat> it's super big, so <laughs> to take me just a, it's going to be hard to show you here. Okay, here's what we got so far. Let me flip it around here. So this row right here is the buttonhole row. And then on the other side, you sew on the buttons and then you use this as the holes for... Where your buttons are going to attach to but right now you want the front facing you like this so here's this the hole the skirt hole let's get my camera back a bit <clears throat> and you want to start your yarn right up here in your very first stitch i'm using white but you, you can use whatever color you want And then we will chain one. I'm going to go back into that same stitch. And I'm going to do a single crochet. And now I'm going to work across the whole top. Putting one single crochet in every stitch along the top. Just like this clean up that top edge so I'm just gonna continue all the way around I'm gonna work one single crochet all the way around the whole top until I get right over here to the other side all right, once you make it to the other side, you should have a total of 89 stitches because that's what we had um, after we finished a row one. If you don't have exactly that, it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to make no difference, but 89 is what I have. So now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to work another row, another of single crochet. So I'm going to go right back into this very first stitch like that and then I'm going to work again one single crochet in every stitch all the way across until I get to the other side so again it's just one row it's just another row of one single crochet in every stitch like that all right I've made it to the other side 89 stitches still 
I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to repeat that one more time. So it'll be a total of three rows of single crochet here around the top. If you want to do more, that's completely up to you. If you want to do less, by all means, you can do as many rows as you want. But I'm just going to do one more row of one single crochet and every stitch across the top until I get to the other side. When I get to the other side, I'll still have 89 stitches. And then I'll just go ahead and tie off and hide my tail. Okay, now what you want to do is you just want to sew on your buttons. Over, it doesn't matter what side you sew them on. Just to your row of... Uh, double crochet here either side's fine um i sewed every uh, i used six buttons down mine and i sewed them on every other row just with a yarn needle and a piece of yarn you can sew them every row if you want every two rows however many you you want to do but i ended up down here one row left with no button so that's how i did mine and then i'll use the other side as my button holes so, like that. Just kind of line them up. And, so that's how I will button up my skirt. You don't even have to put buttons on it if you don't want to. That's up to you. And then I, the fringe. If you want to add fringe. Now fringe isn't for everybody. I like it though a lot but I just don't like putting it on it, it, it is pretty time consuming but I actually had the help of my kids for this tree skirt to put the fringe on because it was such a big project to do so they're good kids and they helped me out get this button and we'll do the fringe fringe is real it's pretty easy to put on now you don't have to do it exactly the same as me <clears throat> let's see here you can make your fringe longer or shorter or thicker or however you want I'll go ahead and show you how I did mine here I've got a couple spaces here I still need to put fringe on so what I did is I took some pieces of yarn here I used my multicolored yarn for the fringe and they are approximately eight inches long I put two of them together just two and then I take my down here closer. I take my uh, hook and I went in between the stitches as you can see. And I stuck it in between the stitch like that and I grab my two pieces of yarn and pull them through. Set my hook down and put my fingers through like that. And now I even up my ends on the on these pieces like that and then I grab them and pull them through the hoop and pull it tight just like that and that's how put the fringe on if you don't want fringe you can leave it off if you want to your fringe longer make it longer if you want it spaced out more you can leave more spaces in between but i put it between in between every stitch so right here would be my next spot so i go with my hook from underneath and then pull my two strands through Drop my hook and put my fingers through the loops like that. Now you got to line up these two pieces. And then pull them through the loop like that. Again, I go to my next one in between the stitches here. Pull them through. Line them up. Get them equal down here as best as possible and pull them through and you can trim them up later if you want if that you know if you're having trouble getting them equal pull it through line them up and just like that and that's how i did my fringe but remember if you want them thick thicker you can add more together you can leave them spaced out farther if you want it's up to you
But that's it. Once you get all your fringe done, your Christmas tree skirt is done. I think it turned out super cool. Though I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. I'm probably going to donate it to someone who needs it. Um, because I already have a special tree, tree skirt that I use at my house. But, yes, I more than likely will probably donate it to someone who needs it. Or I'll do, I'll do something with it. I'll give it away to somebody. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Don't forget to like this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I think it turned out super cool. I really, really like it. And I think it's someone, whoever gets it's going to really, really like it too. Hopefully, anyways. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. You won't, don't want to miss out any of my tutorials or yarn reviews or yarn hauls or anything yarn related. Yarn giveaways. All, kind of, all kinds of stuff for any. I got, if you love yarn, crocheting. My channel covers it all. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on. Um, and that's it. As always, thanks everybody for watching. And have a good day. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this little wreath uh, granny square for Christmas. It's made with pretty much just double and single crochets and then a loopy stitch with a... I'll go over with you and show you how to do it. So, um, and for this project, I use just regular Red Heart Super Saver, which is a worsted weight four ply acrylic. But any kind of yarn, any kind of four ply yarn is gonna work. And then I'm using a size I, which is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And that made about it's probably about a five inch square maybe five and a half or so but for probably about a five inch square so if you want one bigger you can use a bigger needle if you want one smaller you can use a smaller needle but it should be pretty easy so I'm gonna start off with a slip knot on your hook and start with a chain of four one two three four and now I'm going to slip stitch back in the first one to form a ring. And if you want to use the magic circle here, that's fine too. Okay. Now I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to work 12 double crochets through the center of the ring. So I'm going to yarn over and go right through the ring. Drop a loop. And then do my double crochet. And I want to do that a total of 12 times. Then it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then I want to, if you pull your tail, it'll usually make that center circle a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to slip stitch into this first one and that will close that round out. Just like that. Now um, I like to tie off when I do color changes. If you want to uh, slip stitch your new color through and start like that you can. I always tie off when I start new colors. I think that it makes it cleaner looking. Or I, I can't make it very clean whenever I try not to snip off but there so I just went ahead and tied that collar off and now I'm going to start the green wreath I'm going to get my green down here okay now the, the wreath is going to be made with the uh, double oops sorry double loop stitch I'll drop my camera I got a little camera stand that my camera sits on it's kind of wobbly I need to get a new one 
the double loop stitch, which isn't really hard. But what we want to do for that is we want to work it backwards. So you want to put where the good side is facing out, where the other side is the side that's not so pretty is facing you, because the loops will they're worked backwards. So you can start in any stitch that you want. Just go ahead and go into one and pull your yarn through. Kind of hold hold that tail there, and we can either we can kind of work it in as we go, or we can sew it in later. But I'm gonna start with the chain one just to start. Okay, I'm gonna work two double loop stitches in every single stitch around. So how we do the double loop stitch is we take our finger and we wrap our yarn one two two times and you should see three little loops on your hook once you do that you take your needle and you go through your first stitch and then you go up over the top of this thread and then back under all three of them like that pull it out a little bit till you get your loops as long as you want and pull it through the stitch like that and then you can drop them and you'll have two loops and this is your long thread pick up this long thread yarn over and go through these three loops I think it's three there'll be four loops because that's how we start it on your hook go through all these loops on your hook just like that and that's how you do the double loop and you can see it makes two loops so we'll go ahead and do it again. We want to do that two times in each stitch for this time around. So I'm going to go yarn, I'm going to wrap it around my finger. One, two, and you'll see you have three wraps. Go ahead and go into that same stitch again, since we're doing two in each stitch. Go over the top of this last one and then underneath it and underneath the other ones like that now kind of pull it out so it's about the same size as your last ones pull it through like that four loops on your hook yarn over and go through all four so now you'll have another two loops back there so you'll have four just like that I'm trying to hide this tail as I go, so if it's, it's probably kind of annoying being there, but now I'm going to be moving to the next stitch, and I'm going to do the double loop in it twice, just like I did on this one. So I'm going to take my yarn and wrap it around my finger. One, two, and you can see the three wraps. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to go over the top of this. And back under all three of these loops all three that are on my hook pull it out a little bit go through the stitch like that and drop them and pick up your long one yarn over and go through all four of these loops on your hook just like that and you can kind of pull it tight if you want and now you'll have another set of loops you don't have to worry about getting them the exact same size because that's kind of hard. Now we'll do that again in the same stitch. So we're going to wrap one, two, go into that same stitch again, over the top, and then back under all three of them. Pull them out a little bit, go through the stitch, drop your loops, and then pick up your long tail or your long one. Go through the four loops on your hook, and there you go. And that's what it starts to look like. Okay, now we're going to move to the next stitch, and we're going to put two double loops in this one. Take your finger, wrap, wrap, go into the next stitch. 
over the top underneath pull them out a little bit go through your stitch drop all your loops and then grab your pick up your big yarn go through the four loops on yarn over and go through the four loops on your hook and that's one now you want to do it again in the same stitch wrap wrap through your stitch over the top underneath all of them pull them out pull them through drop them all pick up your long one yarn over and go through and there you go and you can cut this tail off whenever you get it sewed in just like that so I'm going to be working these uh, double loop steps double loop stitches two in every single stitch all the way around and when you get back around you'll have a total of 20 you can see when you get back around you can still see your stitches see them one I know it's kind of dark but it's still making stitches to go into and when you get back around you should have a total of 24 of these stitches if you count them from the back way not these loopies we won't count them but these stitches that it makes so go around and put two double loops in every stitch and you should have a total of 24 when you get back all the way back around okay once you make it all the way around you should be able to count and see that you have 24 um, stitches see I put two in each one so here's two 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 all the way around and I do have 24 and you need to make sure you have 24 we gotta have correct number for it won't square up it won't square off right whenever we get around to doing that so so go ahead and slip stitch into your first one and we're gonna go around again with another row of loop stitches this time we're gonna increase we're gonna put one double loop stitch and the next stitch we'll put two double loop stitches the next stitch we'll put one and then the next stitch we'll put two so we'll go ahead and start off I'm gonna start off by just chaining one right there where we just slip stitched now I'm gonna go ahead and work one double loop stitch right here in the stitch that we just slip stitched into and I'm sorry that the yarn is dark but I'm gonna go ahead and do my yarn over my finger go in and do my loop stitch like that now I'm gonna go jump to the next stitch and I'm gonna put two double loop stitches in that one so I'm gonna go in so that's one double loop stitch now I'm gonna do the same thing again in the same stitch like that now the next stitch I'm gonna put one double loop stitch in and I know it's so hard to see I apologize but it's the same thing that we just did in a previous row except we're just doing different numbers so there's one double loop stitch in that one now I'm gonna jump to the next one and put two double loop stitches in, two double loop stitches in it but we're still making them the same way that we made them last round so there's one double go back into the same stitch and do another one like that now the next stitch is going to get one double loop stitch and the next stitch will get two and you just repeat that all the way around and you can see it makes your wreath a little bit thicker so you want to do that all the way around and when you get back around you should have a total of 36 stitches at the end of this round okay when you make it all the way around and you can count these stitches back here and you have 36 go ahead and slip stitch into your first one and then I'm going to tie this collar off 
and I'm going to switch colors again. And you don't have to switch colors. You can do your square any colors that you want. But. And there I got my wreath part made. And you can see my loops are not the same size. So a real wreath, they wouldn't be perfect either. So and that's what we have so far. So we're going to start working from the front side again. So I'm going to switch back to my white. And you see these stitches? That's what we're going to be going through these back stitches here. So you can start any one that you want. I'm going to pull my yarn through. And I'm going to start off by chaining one. Now I'm going to go back into this same stitch and I'm going to put two double crochets. So there's one and two. Now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to go back to the same stitch again and put two more double crochets. What I'm doing is forming a corner of the granny square. Just like that. So all in that same stitch was two double crochets, a chain two, and two more doubles. Now I'm going to work one half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. So I'm going to do half doubles now. I'm going to yarn over and go in. Try to hide that tail as I go, but you can see these stitches back here. I'm just going to go into it. They're kind of cockeyed to the back a little bit. You can see there's kind of a bumpy bumpies here. Stitches are kind of in the back. Just grab one. And I'm going to do a half double crochet. One in each of the next eight. So there's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. Now I'm going to form a corner again into the next stitch. So in the next stitch, I'm going to do two double crochets, doubles this time. One, two in the same stitch, and then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to go back in the same stitch again. And do two more doubles. One, two. So now that's another corner we have. Now I'm going to work around again and put one half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. Half double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the next stitch I'm going to form a corner again. I'm going to put two double crochets in it. Two doubles. Chain two. And then two more doubles. One, so there's another corner again one half double crochet in each of the next eight stitches half doubles one two three four five six seven, eight, and then it's going to be a corner again, and the next stitch, two double crochets, one, two, chain two, and then two more doubles. Now if you counted right, you should have eight stitches left to go ahead and put a half double crochet in each of them. Two, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There it is. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch into our first double crochet and that closes that round off. Okay, now we're going to go around again. But this time it's going to be all double crochets. It's not going to be half doubles anymore. So I'm going to start by chaining one and going back into the same stitch and putting a double crochet. And then I'm going to double crochet into the next stitch. And then when I get to the corner, I'm going to do the corner the same way. Go right through it. Two doubles. Chain two. And then two more doubles. One. Two. Now I'm going to work my way around putting one double crochet in every stitch. You want to make sure you get this guy right here. Sometimes these stitches go on top of me, but right there is your first one. And I'm going to put one double crochet in every stitch. Doubles, remember, we're not doing half doubles anymore. Until I get to the next corner stitch. Just like that, and then when you get to the corner, you just do your corner again, two doubles, chain two, and two more doubles. And then work way around again, putting one double crochet in every stitch until you get to the corner. So we're just going to repeat this all the way around till you get back to the beginning. Okay, when you make it back around, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into my first double crochet. And I'm going to tie this off. If you want to go around again and make it bigger, you're more than welcome. Just keep doing rows of double crochet around again. And then the corners are always the same. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and you don't have to do this, but I'm going to go around it with a row of red single crochet. Just make an edging on it. So you can start anywhere that you want. I'll just start in a corner. We're going to do kind of the same thing we did only with single crochet. So I'm going to start out with the chain one. Okay, in the corner I'm going to put two single crochets. One, two, and I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to go back and put two more single crochets. So just like the doubles, only we're doing it with singles. And then making sure you get this guy right here. Start here with a single crochet. And then one single in every stitch around. Except for the corners. They get the two singles chain two and two more singles and again you don't have to do this I just like to thought it looked a little bit more Christmassy I don't know probably not that corner Two singles, chain two, and two more singles all into the corner. Don't forget this guy that kind of hides. And you just continue this all the way around and it puts that edge on it. Okay, when you make it all the way around, slip stitch into your first single crochet, tie that off. And you can be done if you want, or if you want to put a bow on it, you can. Um, 
You can make a bow, or you can put little berries on it, or you know whatever you wanted to do. You can use regular ribbon. You could like use hot glue. Works really good for yarn. Just make sure that you use a low heat hot glue gun. You can use regular ribbon and tie a bow on here, or you can just tie one with one strand of yarn and glue it on, or you can use your yarn needle and sew it on like that little uh, silver beads or whatever to decorate it I guess it's endless so what you could do on mine I just I made um, a chain of like 30 or 35 or something I'll go ahead and do it And then I just single crocheted in the second stitch from the hook like that and then I just put one single crochet <coughs> in every stitch for the length of my chain I mean you can make your beginning chain as long as you want your ribbon to be like I said you can do it you don't have to do the ribbon like I did it however you want to do it and just show you real quick though And I just went all the way down. And I just made one uh, row of one long piece of crochet with just single crochet row. like that and then I kind of just tied it off and left on kind of a little bit of a longer tail on it and then I just kind of worked with it and made it bow shaped this one's a little shorter than my other one but it's a lot shorter I guess I made a smaller bow and then I just took a piece of yarn and wrap the center with a straight piece of yarn. If you know how to make a different bow, you do it however. If I would have had a ribbon, like small ribbon, I probably would have used that. But then I just, I gotta have to hide these tails, but then I just took a piece of yarn and tied a knot around the center, really tight. Maybe get rid of some of these tails, I guess, so you can see better. Kind of like that. My other one was a lot longer. I started with a lot longer of a chain. I think it was like 30 or 35. This one I just did a sample to show you, but I just wrap it kind of tight. And, and then I kind of, I used hot glue to tie mine on, or to, sew, or to put mine on. Oh, low heat hot glue. But you can sew it too if you wanted to. So, but kind of like that, or however you want to do it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, if you make this or anything else, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You can post a picture on the my Bagger Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And please don't forget to check out all my other tutorials. And until next time, have a good day.